Okay, here we go. The um, first thing we have to do after you get the tires off and any spacers you have off, is remove this uh, chrome cover here if you have one of these locking hubs. Um, and that is a set of Allen head bolts that come out hopefully pretty easily. These have had anti-seize on them, so they come out nicely. Once you have all five or six of those little screws out, then you pull this off, which is the this is the spring that pushes the gears together for locking the hub. And we've got to obviously clean this all up. It's pretty nasty. Once you have that piece out, that cap out, then the next thing you can do is take and remove the snap ring that's in here that holds this thing together. And it's kind of hard to find in among the goop. And there it comes. So that little snap ring there holds this outer part on once you remove these bolts. Uh, take it off now. And as soon as these bolts are off, this whole thing uh, can pull out. Uh, you'll notice that uh, now that the cap is off, we have a straight shot at these nuts. Otherwise, you don't and you can't really get them off very well. So. And these are only on, I think, at 50 pounds. So they're really pretty easy to, to take off. And bring this out. Okay, I have all the bolts out. This should just pull off now since I took that locking nut off. Right, and there's the hub. Now at this point, this will not lock. Um, I'm going to take all this over to a cleaning bowl and get it soaking so that uh, it's all cleaned up by the time we're ready to use it again. So now I'm going to pull this drum off. Hopefully it'll come off pretty easy. That over here. And then I'm going to take pliers and tools and remove all this crap. It's been a long time since I had my uh, drum brake tools and they disappeared over time. So I'm just going to use some water pump pliers, pull these springs off, and uh, Careful because these springs are strong and they will hurt you. Okay, once you have all these springs removed, just pull these bolts apart. And you're to the backing plate. Pretty straightforward. So now we have those off. We have the spindle here that we have to get off before we can remove this backing plate. Um, one thing to note that I did not know about my hubs is that there's a grease fitting here. So you can grease up these hub bearings uh, without taking them apart. The problem I've run into is that the grease fitting itself is notched down in this tiny little corner and my the head of mine won't go over it so um, I need to figure out where to get a, um, a grease uh, gun extension that will fit over that in that tight little spot, but that's really a cool feature. So to get these, uh, this hub off, you've got to remove these big nuts in here. 
And what I did was I uh, got this from Four Wheel Drive. It's uh, specially made to fit that nut and take it off. So it's a half inch drive and these nuts should be on here about 50 pounds. I don't think that one was. And it's important to remain um, to retain the order of things coming out of here. So that's the outer um, nut and I'm going to put down here on a piece of cloth. Then the next thing to come out is a plate that keeps the inner bearing from moving when you're tightening it up. Tightening that outer locking nut up. And uh, see if I can wiggle that out of there. So you see it has a tab here that goes in the slot there. And that keeps this from turning and therefore you can tighten this outer one up. And the inner one is not affected. So let's get that inner one. And that came off nice and easily. Maybe a little too easily. Okay, so you got the inner nut out that actually loads the, the um, bearing. And then you have another plate, which is the thrust washer. And this washer takes the load from the nut, transfers it to the bearing. And there it comes. And you'll notice that this one is thinner than the other one. That's how you tell them apart. The other one is wide. And the thrust washer is the narrow one. So I don't know if you can see that, but there, there they are. Off comes the hub in all its glory and its yuckiness. This goes to the shop. And now we're down to the backing plate. And these nuts here, all we have to do is undo those suckers and that backing plate will come off. So once you have all these nuts off, this backing plate just pulls off, in theory. Now, for now, I'm just going to let that hang on the uh, brake line since this thing is going to be replaced anyway. And we have our axle. So, what we need to do is clean this all up and get it ready for the carrier. So, the carrier mounts right on these things and it points backwards. And we'll see that tomorrow. Bye. Well, look, while the hub was at the shop getting the new studs pressed in and the new seal pressed in and cleaned up, I put the caliper uh, carrier on and bolted that up using the same studs but the nuts that were provided with the kit. I also um, hooked up the brake line so that when I put the um, caliper on the brake line is in place. I didn't tighten that down because I want to be able to turn it so I can mount it properly on the on the uh, caliper um, so it's not um, kinked up. So that's in place. One of the things that I had to do um, was find an adapter because the um, brake line that comes with the kit does not fit the fitting that is on the Jeep. You need an adapter there to change the size of the threads. Um, and again, Complete Auto Parts uh, had that in stock, uh, which is good. And here's the old hub with a seal, new seal on it, new studs on it, and the old bearing cleaned up. And that feels good. Now the next thing we need to do is put the um, washer 
the thrust washer back in first and put the tab over the groove run that down that takes the load of the bearing next thing we do is put in one of these big nuts and screw that down now I've got two books in addition to the instructions that came with this kit one of them is the Chilton's manual for this year Jeep and the other is a rebuild manual for this vintage and they say to do is to tighten this nut down to 50 pounds while you're turning this to seat the bearing there's 50 pounds Okay, so the bearing is seated. The next thing you want to do is that is actually too tight to run the bearing. And what the manual says, both manuals, is that you've got to back off this nut. And one of them says back off no more than a, a quarter turn. And the other says to back off one flat. So what I did was I did the measurements. There's 20 threads per inch on this guy. And at 20 threads per inch, if I back this thing off one flat, one sixth of a turn, then I've loosened it up by eight thousandths, which is almost a hundredth of an inch. And now this thing should be adjusted to the right level without and play without being too tight without being too loose so the uh, first major problem I have with this kit the front brake kit is that the instructions provided by SSBC for torquing the front wheel bearings is incorrect in fact could be dangerous they instruct you to torque down that um, load nut to 70 to 75 pounds and then the only thing they say is make sure it turns freely well at 75 pounds it probably will feel like it's still turning freely but the other manuals quite clearly say don't go above 50 pounds of pressure and then back off one sixth uh, or one flat on that nut to achieve the proper setting so this instruction, I believe, is uh, not only incorrect, but potentially dangerous and really is disappointing. So the next thing that we need to do is put this separator washer back in and then this outer locking nut on. And we're supposed to tighten this locking nut down to 50 pounds. So let's do that. And that's 50 pounds. It seems to be running nice and smooth. No unplay, no problems. We need to pack the rest of this cavity with good bearing, high temperature bearing grease. And the next thing we want to do is put this locker back on. And I've got it all cleaned up and it's ready to go back. And one thing you should note is you don't pack this um, locker because the gears inside won't slide apart um, if you do. So it has to be loose. So what I use is I use uh, lithium grease that I spray on. This um, is set up so it's easy to take apart and 
grease and they recommend greasing and or uh, spraying inside here is what I would do uh, and cleaning it up uh, at least once a year uh, if you're doing a lot of off-roading I would do more and the same thing with the cap here so I've used this spray lithium grease um, to lubricate this and keep it in good shape but this does not get this area does not get packed with grease Okay, I've put uh, these bolts back and I tighten them down to 50 pounds. Um, the instructions that came with the kit don't say. The books uh, pretty much don't say. I found one section someplace that, that said 40 to 50 pounds. Uh, so I just tightened them down to 50. There's not much stress on this piece here, so 50 is plenty. And. Uh, now I'm going to put the snap ring back in, which is an easy fit. Something that shouldn't be forgotten. Um, and we have this uh, cap that goes on. Now you notice the cap has a one piece here that um, is different from the rest. It sticks out and there is one slot here on this hub locking uh, mechanism that that goes into. And I'm replacing these Allen head screws with um, stainless steel ones uh, to look a little prettier and they don't take much of a load either. Um, and because they're stainless steel I shouldn't have to put any anti-seize on them. So they're not going to rust in there. Okay, so we have all these bolts in. We have the cap on. We need to test the cap, make sure it's still working. Locked up. Free. So, we're ready for the rotor. Cool. Okay, so push the rotor on. And again, on my Jeep, I use a spacer here and then just lug nuts to tie that spacer up but what's nice about this is I can have the wheel off and have this tight up and uh, in permanent position when I put the caliper up. Okay we've got the spacer bolted up which is holding the rotor and I put the calipers on top. The caliper fits between these forks in the backing plate in the uh, carrier and you have to take the bolts out and press the floating rings out a bit in order for this to fit. So those rings, those tubes have to be flush basically with the face of the, uh, the caliper in order for this to fit in. And then you put the bolts in. I'm going to put some um, Loctite on them uh, to get this in nice and securely. And do the bottom one first since that one is one you can actually get in. The second major problem I have with the kit is this forward uh, bolt that holds the caliper to the carrier. As you can see in the still photo, the uh, bolt itself interferes with the castle nut on the stud that holds this uh, steering knuckle in place. So you can't um, you can't put this this nut back on without cutting through the bolt that the kit provides. Um, so when you cut through that bolt, obviously it's an Allen head. You're weakening the your ability to ever get that bolt back out. So I believe that that is a major flaw that could have been addressed with a different bolt, maybe with a, just a plain hex head and a 3 16th inch rise on that hex head or even a quarter because these bolts have long heads. So 
um, this is a major problem. If you don't cut that, uh, you can't get that castle nut back on. And because it's there, you can't even put, even when cut, you can't put a um, socket head back over it and torque it down properly. The only way I did it was an open-ended wrench and I just moved the nut to its previous position and then ran the cutter key through it. So I think that this is a significant design flaw in the kit. Also because of this design flaw, you can't put a Allen wrench headed socket on uh, this part of this, the um, caliper because um, of this uh, castle nut and uh, the uh, bolt that comes up through it. So you can't really know that you've got a good torque uh, amount on that bolt either. So um, I'm disappointed with that, needless to say. But right, everything's hooked up now. Time to bleed the brakes and then uh, put the wheel on and go for a test ride. We'll see what happens. Time to take her out for a test ride. Special thanks goes to Complete Auto Parts who helped me on this project. Um, they have uh, several guys there that have been around for quite a while working on Jeeps, other vehicles of this vintage. They know their stuff. Uh, they have a nice shop that helped me uh, press these, uh, these lug bolts in and uh, do a bunch of the other work. So uh, without them I would have been in real trouble.